back to Stary Goats and today we are going to show you guys how to make Chev. It is a very simple cheese, definitely a beginner's cheese to make, um, to start making with your goat milk. Uh, it's delicious, it's a very good spreadable cheese, very versatile as far as uh, herbs or spices that you can put on it. So I am going to show you guys how to do that. So I am going to start with one gallon of raw goat's milk. And what, what I'm going to do is get it to 88 degrees, um, and then we're going to add our cultures and rennet. But to get it to 88 degrees, a lot of recipes will actually call for putting it in, the, in your sink, putting the pan in your sink in hot water, and getting it to temp that way. I'm a little too impatient for that, and I just watch my milk really well, put it on a very low heat, and I'm going to stir it constantly until it gets to that 88 degrees. Um, actually more like 86, 85 degrees because the residual heat from the pan will bring it up to that 88 degrees. So we're going to get that going and then we'll see you back here when we start adding the cultures and rennet. I got the milk to 88 degrees and now um, again mine is raw. So at this point if you don't have raw milk um, you cannot use ultra pasteurized or canned milk for this chef. It won't work. So if you wanted to use, I've never tried it myself, but from what I understand, you can also use like vitamin D milk um, uh, from the store that is pasteurized, just don't use ultra pasteurized. If you do, you're going to need calcium chloride that you would be adding into it if it's not raw milk. So we have raw milk, you don't need the calcium chloride. Um, so first off, you're going to use a quarter teaspoon of mesophilic culture. And I buy it and I get it in these little packets, which is a um, half teaspoon in each packet. You can buy the bags of it, but I don't know that I'm quite there with all my cheese making yet to buy the big bag. But, so, you just need a quarter teaspoon. And then you just sprinkle it on the top. Now, when you add the mesophilic culture to the milk, you're wanting it to, to rest for about five minutes so that, it, that when you stir it in gently, it incorporates better. So in other words, it's just absorbing that milk and getting a little softer so that it absorbs better. It's not a dry powder on the top that won't incorporate into the milk easily. So while that's happening, you also are going to need a third cup of water, cool water, and all you need is two drops of rennet. I'm using double strength microbial rennet, so I'm just going to literally put two drops, let's see here, you don't need a lot. One, oh, that was about three. It'll be okay. So, you're going to also need that. Just stir it up in there. So, in about five minutes, um, we'll be back and I'm going to slowly just stir the um, mesophilic culture into the milk and then we're going to add the rennet. Alright, so it's been five minutes. I'm going to start with my slotted spoon. I'm just going to slowly, without breaking the surface, I'm going to just slowly start incorporating that mesophilic culture into the milk. And be gentle when you do it. You just want an up and down motions, gentle motions to get that um, culture mixed in. This is a cheese as well I, I really like to do in the evening because after we're done stirring this in and the remnant, it's literally going to take no less than 12 hours. So it's going to be 12 to 16 hours before the curds are set. So obviously I like that portion of the time to be done while I'm sleeping. And then when I wake up in the morning, I'm ready for the next part. Okay, 
Okay, so that is stirred in. Make sure the rennet, again, just a couple drops, guys. So with the rennet and liquid and the water, cool water, I'm just gonna go like this over the slotted spoon, just to not pour it into one direct spot. And then I'm going to stir that in, gently. Now, I only made one gallon this time, a one gallon batch. It's an easy, easy, easy cheese to make a couple gallon batch. Um, typically, I'll make a two gallon batch, but with the milk I have in my fridge right now, I have other plans of a hard cheddar. So, I'm only making the one gallon batch. And as well, it's, it's, it's an easy starter amount, and it's a very, very good freezing cheese. So, if you don't want to eat it all, you just kind of put it in saran wrap and put it in the freezer and it lasts for six months. So it's a good cheese to make a double batch of or even a triple batch because you can freeze it for so long. So, that got that, feel comfortable with it. point this is what I do it's gonna sit it's gonna do its magic while we're sleeping and well right now we're gonna walk outside and milk I'm gonna move the goats from their pasture to their pens and go outside and milk but overnight while we're sleeping it's just gonna be resting here so when I wake up in the morning I'm gonna check it and I'll see you guys back here in the morning Um, it has been sitting, I'd say 13, it's 8 o'clock, so about 13 hours. So now what we're going to do is get it into the cheesecloth so it can drain. Okay, so you guys see the way there. That's exactly what you want to see. And if I move that, that is the cheese under there. So what we're going to do... have just a bowl with a strainer and my cheesecloth. So I'm going to start getting that cheese into here. Alright, let's see. So I want all of it, so I'm going to be careful. Yum. Look at that, you guys. So, I'm just going to start getting it in here. Chev is very delicious, you guys. It's uh, like a cream cheese. But it's more of a tangy cheese. It's 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 a tangy cheese. Ah. So it looks nice. That is the consistency you want. Probably feed that way to the chickens. But this works really, really nice for me. Um, this is my cheese press, but I take the actual press part of it off and put this pan underneath and I'm going to tie it here so that it can drain because this now has to drain for a few hours. It just, it just depends and you want to keep an eye on it. Um, the first time I did it, I was told it needs to um, stand there, you know, hang and drain until it no longer drips. Well, I felt like, gosh, it's really, it's been like forever hours and it's still dripping. So when I checked it, it, ha it was barely dripping, but dripping. Uh, but anyway, when I checked it, it, it really got dry. So I didn't, 
I would have rather it not got dry. Still tasted really good, but it was just drier than I than I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be more spreadable. Um, so again, just keep an eye on it. It might still be dripping for you slowly, and it could be ready. So I just want to show you guys the consistency of this cheese at this stage. Um, so come here. So you see how much liquid is in it? A lot of that is going to drain out, but if you, you can already see it, it's like a spreadable cheese. It's delicious. So why I scoop it into here and not just into there is because look at all of that that has drained out so far. All good way. Dogs and chickens love it. Or it's a good way um, for you to be able to make ricotta with as well. So, what I'm going to do transport it here. Obviously, you want it up. Above hot. And I'll take these two. Ah. And tie them back. And this, I'm just gonna make sure I got it covered. Okay, good deal. Cool, huh, guys? So here it is draining. See how quickly it's draining. In a couple hours, it's not going to be draining quickly like that. It'll be down to more of a quick drip, if you will, not a steady stream. It'll just be drip, 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 drip. At that point, I'm going to check it. So. I will see you guys back here in a couple hours. Um, I would also just like to say, obviously not everybody has a cheese press that's as cool as mine that is perfect for hanging cheeses like this. Um, I'll put it in the description below. But either way, if you you can also do it in a big pan. So I know I've seen a lot of people do it that way. If you have a big spoon, something like this, or a big wooden spoon, you can tie it you know, to the spoon and have it hanging in the pan, um, or some people will just hang it on one of their, you know, door handles here, if they're strong enough, and just hang it there with a bowl underneath it. So you have different options. Obviously, if you don't have this, that doesn't mean you can't make the cheese. Um, but the point is, it has to be hanging so that it can do its thing. All right, you guys, it has been four hours that this has been sitting here draining. It has a slight drip. I know I told you guys I'd be back in a couple hours, but I lied. Sorry about that. I got busy. But anyway, um, I believe it's ready. So we're going to check that out. Another way to tell, too, I, I do this, and I can hear it. Um, if it's not very liquidy then it's going to be dry and you can't hear it making the mush sound so if you make it enough you'll know the sound there it is so i'm going to roll that oop, oop, into my bowl yum yum all right, at this point, I'm going to add a little sea salt to it. Just gonna eyeball it, I don't want it too salty. Probably about a teaspoon. And stir that in. This cheese is good on bagels. Awesome on crackers. You can um, again season it any way you want. I'm going to cut up some parsley, green onion, and dill. Cut it up real thin. I'm going to make a log out of this and then I'm going to roll that log in it. 
and anything we're not going to use for today, I'm going to not season with anything because I can freeze it. So that's what I will be doing. Probably just make two logs and then have a couple for, for the freezer. So anything that you freeze, I'll, I'll make a log and then you put it in saran wrap real tight and then you can put it in the freezer up to six months. But you cannot put, you, know, you don't want to put herbs or spices or anything like that. You want it just to be plain. Other than the salt we put in, obviously. But you want it just to be very plain. And then when you take it out of the freezer and thaw it out, then once it's completely thawed out, that's when you're going to add fresh herbs or even dried herbs. Um, but you don't do that uh, if you're going to freeze it. It just takes the flavor away from the herbs. They won't, it won't be as good. Okay, so we got that mixed in. Let's see. Perfect. Oh my gosh, that's good. Let me you guys. It's almost like a ricotta. Lovely. I am just going to use two logs for now. I'm going to um, season two logs. So I have two pieces of saran wrap down here ready for me. I got my cut herbs, which are, again, the dill, parsley, and green onion. So I cut them up, mixed them all together real good. And this is the messy part. So... Do my best to make a log out of this really ooey gooey cheese. And roll it. I'm gonna just kind of get it in there as well. Okay, I'll just set that there. I don't want to get these herbs in this because I'm freezing some of it. Let's see. Come on, bigger with this a little. Oh, well. Wash my hands real quick. All right, now I'm just gonna roll it up tightly. Twist the ends. Tuck. And there you have it guys, a little log of Chev. Um, so at this point, I'm going to put this in the fridge because you guys see how, um, I don't know, creamy it is. It's still going to be creamy, but I, I want it to harden a little bit. Plus, I want those herbs to infuse the cheese. So for about an hour to two hours, I'm going to put this bad boy, these bad boys in the fridge, let them cool down so that when we cut it, or, you know, when we're slicing it, it's not... <laughs> My son's looking at me like he's mad he has to wait another hour. Um, anyway, when we slice it, it'll be good and it'll be a little bit more firm. That is how easy peasy it is to make chef. It's... <clears throat> 
takes quite a bit of time as far as hours are concerned in, or involved in it. But as far as hands-on and what you need to actually do with it, it's so easy. It just needs a lot of resting time, if you will. So really good cheese, really easy cheese. If you like tangy, this is your cheese. So it looks like I'm going to have three more logs. I'm just going to wrap them up in saran wrap like this, but without any herbs or, or seasoning on them. Throw them in the freezer, and then whenever we're ready for them, or you know, whenever we feel like eating them, I'll just pull one or two out and then herb it once it um, completely thaws out. So that is that easy, you guys, to make chev. Hope you guys try it, and uh, let me know if you do. Let me know how it tastes for, it, for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope it helped you out.